So in the previous video, we saw how the membrane, we saw how the membrane, the positive charge on the outside and negative charge on the inside, acts as a capacitor. So if we were to do the circuit diagram for this, it would look something like that. However, what would eventually happen, or what you'd expect to happen, is that the capacitor, its charge would, or it would discharge, and you'd end up with nothing. So you need something to drive this capacitor. You need something to maintain the charge. Now, the driving force that helps to maintain this membrane potential. Well, this is produced by two major ions, sodium and potassium. Now we have sodium inside the cell and sodium outside the cell, and the same for potassium, we have potassium inside and outside of the cell. Now when we look at the concentration of sodium outside the cell, okay, it's high, so it's very high, whereas the concentration of potassium is relatively low. Whereas inside the cell, it's the opposite. The concentration of potassium is high and the concentration of sodium is low. On top of that, we have negative charge on the inside of the membrane and positive charge on the outside. So what that means in the end is that we have an electrochemical gradient that favours the movement of sodium into the membrane and we have an electrochemical gradient favouring the movement of potassium outside of the cell. And so what happens therefore is that these act as a driving force to help maintain the membrane potential. In fact they sort of act as a battery So if we were, again, to look at this as a circuit, here's our capacitor. Like so. Here's the driving force of the sodium ions. Here's the driving force of the potassium ions. This is outside the cell. This is inside. And this is helping to maintain the charge on the capacitor. So this is helping maintain the positive and negative. Okay? And so this will maintain the membrane potential. But Although we have this difference in concentration of sodium and potassium outside, the ability or how well they cross the membrane, so their ability to cross the membrane, is determined by protein channels. We have protein channels on the membrane. And so they will allow for the passage of sodium and potassium across the membrane and to, for sodium to go into the cell or for potassium to come out. And so this is called permeability. So the permeability of sodium is related to how easy it is for it to cross. And this is determined by the number of protein channels that are open. So that's what determines sodium permeability and obviously for potassium as well too, um, its permeability is determined by the number of protein channels open that allow potassium to cross. So this relative permeability is similar to resistance. So 
the less the permeability of sodium, the greater the resistance for the movement of sodium. So we can add this here. So I'll do it in a different color. We can add this resistance here to our circuit diagram. So what we now have here is the resistance to sodium as determined by the protein channels that are open, so related to its permeability. And we also have the resistance to potassium. And that's also related to its permeability. So as you can see now, we have this circuit diagram that consists of the voltage, which is the driving force produced by the different charges, the different levels of sodium and potassium inside and outside of the cell. We have the resistance, which is determined by the number of channels or the permeability of the cell to sodium and potassium. And we have the capacitance, which is maintained by the positive charge on the outside, the negative charge on the inside of the membrane. And all this is occurring at rest. However, when you look at this, sodium wants to go into the cell. Potassium wants to go into the cell as well too. So you have a driving, oh sorry, potassium wants to go out, not in. So potassium wants to go out, sodium wants to go in. And eventually, if this was all that was happening, eventually the concentration of sodium would be equal both inside and outside the cell. And the same would happen for potassium. Potassium inside would equal potassium outside the cell. Now this isn't a good situation because then there'd be no driving force. And if there's no driving force, there'd be no VNA and VK. Then the capacitor would lose charge and there would be zero potential difference across the membrane. So if there was zero, zero potential difference across the membrane, what would happen is, how could you change it? You couldn't change the movement of sodium, you couldn't change the movement of potassium. So therefore you couldn't communicate with the cell, you couldn't say to the cell, hey, do something, and you do that by changing its membrane potential. So therefore you need something that helps maintain this VNA and this VK. And what this thing is, and we'll look in the top right hand corner, and I'll do it in black. Here's our cell. We have a protein that's called the sodium potassium pump. Now the sodium potassium pump uses energy and what the sodium potassium pump does is it pumps sodium ions out of the cell to help maintain the elevated sodium con concentration outside the cell and it pumps potassium ions into the cell to help maintain the potassium concentration high inside the cell. So the sodium potassium pump uses energy. Why it needs energy is because it's pumping sodium out against its concentration gradient and pumping potassium in against its concentration gradient. So it's working against gradients here. It's pumping, them, pumping potassium in, pumping sodium out, and it's maintaining this gradient here and this gradient here. And so by maintaining the sodium and potassium gradients inside and out of the cell, it's maintaining these voltages which drive and maintain the positive and negative charge difference across the membrane and hence maintain the resting membrane potential, which is important. In Dr. Yusuf's lectures, you'll look at this relationship in a bit more detail. You'll also look at what happens when you change the permeability of the cell to sodium ions. And you'll also look at how you can calculate 
the effect on membrane potential of sodium potassium concentrations and so on. Thank you.